Hello everyone and welcome to join our meetup today. I am Irina Radchenko, Strategic Hardware Relationships Manager at Gurtam and I will be the host of today's meetup. As you probably know, Gurtam meetups are online events where we meet with our partners, Gurtam experts and moderators. Today is the 10th anniversary meetup in English and in case you haven't seen the previous ones, welcome to check the links below in the video description and you may see the links to YouTube channel and our website. By the way, today's meetup is also recorded. Today I'm joined by the experts of hardware part of the world and Velon community members, of course. Please welcome Maxim Rivyakin from Galileo Sky, hardware manufacturer from Russia. Hi. Marianne Sudik from Quicklink, hardware manufacturer from China. Hello. Tim Almaev from Escort, hardware manufacturer from Russia. Hi guys. And we are also joined by Gurdam expert Andrew Litetsky. You may know him as Vialon Implementation Specialist. Hello, nice to meet you. Dear partners, please give us a virtual round of applause and let's begin. Today we will talk about hardware products which still remain in demand during COVID-19 crisis. We can call them crisis best sellers. And we will discuss non-COVID areas of business which are still available nowadays. And of course, what VLON functionality would be needed. In other words, let's see what niches are available and active for telematics business. Um, let's see what hardware is suitable for these particular cases and what VLON features would be needed. Before I pass the word to our first presenter, Please let me emphasize that you are more than welcome to ask your questions in the chat during the presentation. We will be reading and answering some of the questions after each presentation. Now, I am passing the word to our first presenter, Maxim. Maxim, please share what is your best seller right now and what is the business area it's applicable to. Well, well once again, just first of all, first, let me for another opportunity to perform in front of the community virtually though it's a bit different experience from what we used to have we, we well, from what we all are used to and I know everyone here are missing uh, those live contacts that we received during conferences and expos uh, still it's still a great pleasure so um, well the topic we have to discuss right now actually it's a very old one i guess when we talk about iot and telematics overall uh we we, we do the same like uh we transfer data from offline to online uh we track we control we automate uh, we reduce the number of live contacts and uh, in the end of the day we help businesses to stay efficient under any circumstances. So actually it's the great business to be in during the crisis. So yes, many verticals right now physically stop their operations. Um, if the vehicles are parked, probably there is not much we can help them right now, to be honest. We can definitely think of... Um, what we can do for them in the future in post-COVID era. And it's a great potential, actually. Uh, but I believe uh, th this could be another uh, or different topic for a conversation. Uh, and so while some industries fell into deep recession, some are still viable and some are even growing right now. And it doesn't take a lot of time to find out those industries. Just look at the window. Uh, retailers, retailers feel okay overall. Governmental services will always be there. Um, emergency services are seeking for our help and delivery services and the online shops are booming at the moment. So, but we at what we at Galileo Sky experiencing right now is the growing demand from the agricultural sector. Uh, because probably COVID-19 changed us a lot. Uh, we are changing our consuming patterns. Uh, the structure of our expenses already changed. Um, we um, probably staying at home. We even open our fridges more often. So probably demand for the agricultural goods is high because of that. So and 
it's obvious that this industry is one of the most stable during the, this during any type of crisis, uh, and it's proved by numbers. We we are working with few OEMs who are actually manufacturing uh, machineries for agricultural sector, such as tractors and combines, and they increased their numbers drastically during last couple of months. So this is why we want to share the certain keys which our partners deployed a while ago, a few time ago. Uh, but this case really help uh, their customer a lot to increase efficiency. And what is the most important, probably the most important right now, to reduce contacts between people within the company. So they, that's what they did. They created IoT Greenhouse Remote Control and auto Automation System. They call it IoT Greenhouse 1.0, version 1.0. So what does it consist of? Um, well, first, probably for those who don't know what is the greenhouse is. So this is kind of construction with the walls and roof. Most of the times it is transparent. Most of the times it's made of, of glass. So the um, sunlight comes through it and helps vegetables grow. Um, the certain temperature should be sustained there for the comfort of comfortable growth of the vegetables. So the plants would give us the good, the good harvest, um, and so on. So it's kind of ecosystem for the vegetables to grow. And, uh, the challenge there, um, to control the, um, the environment, to control the conditions at which vegetables, uh, grow. So when our partner came to the to the customer, they saw the opportunity. So they see that uh, those parameters are tracked manually, physically by someone who comes to the to the greenhouse and checks what the temperature is there. So what is the temperature? What is the humidity? What is the temperature of the soil? So all of these parameters were were received manually. So more than that, while they are received manually, they, uh, in case if something is wrong, um, first of all, we lost time. Secondly, we should do something to, to make it different, to, to reach, uh, those conditions that are suitable for this type of vegetables. Um, and next, next tasks that they have, uh, found out, they were found out during the implementation. So let me start with the implementation. So they have picked seven different sensors. Seven, six of them are for, uh, for controlling of the microclimate. So actually of the temperature in the different parts of the greenhouse and, uh, one sensor for humidity. Um, all of the sensors, they were communicating in different protocols. So some of them were, were communicating with the tracker with uh, analog signal. Some of them were using serial ports. And this is when Galileo Sky is a great tool. So once you have certain requirement to connect the device, which has not yet been integrated by us, so you have the opportunity, and our partner had the opportunity to do that with EasyLogic technology. So they created the script, they wrote the script, so they wrote the algorithm uh, that helps to connect those sensors over RS-485 um, and eventually made it online. So they transferred all those parameters uh, to the VLAN platform. So as a result, the, the, it's already the great result. Nobody should come to the greenhouse and check those parameters in life. So uh, any data comes uh, to the cloud. Um, then they moved to, uh, to the idea to automate the process. So nobody should even come even to change something. So, uh, once the, they, they created another script for easy logic inside. So inside the same tracker, they created the, the, the script, uh, while, when, while, um, certain parameter reached its threshold, it, it, it generates certain action to change the mode uh, of operation of the climate aggregate. So it helped the customer to avoid necessary servicing of the greenhouse. So the temperature and humidity of the air and the soil was, um, was, uh, kept automatically without human operation. We are reducing another life contact and another person will not come to, to, should not come, come to, to their working place and not to, uh, have a risk to be, uh, deceased by, by COVID. So, um, 
no staff is required on site. The dispatcher receives instant warning each time when something goes wrong. So if the certain parameter reach the threshold, they have the instant warning about it. More than that, if the logic for some of the reasons doesn't work and um, the device doesn't um, uh, is not able to uh, switch the climate uh, aggregate in that way that in that manner that it will sustain the desired temperature and humidity, um, they have this warning as well. More than that, if they want to do something manually, if they want to control those sensors remotely, they can do it from VLAN as well. So by sending few commands to the tracker. So uh, such an application help them not only to increase the number of uh, stuff on, on the object, but also to increase efficiency, obviously. So now our partner is thinking about uh, creating uh, IoT Greenhouse version 2.0 out of it. So uh, it, it is also about um, UV lights and the sunlights um, growing vegetables, I mean. So in the summer time, for example, here, in Russia, uh, during mid midday, um, the sun is burning the, 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 the plants. So they want to create the system that will automatically uh, by the schedule, close the curtains of the greenhouse, and so the the um, the plants will be safe. And another thing, they want to 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 play with the uh, ventilation system just to to get more CO2 or vice versa O2 uh, from and to the greenhouse. So all in all, all of all of is all of it done uh, a while ago. It was not related with uh, COVID-19 at all. So it was only about efficiency, but now it helps our, our client, our mutual client with our partner um, to avoid those um, uh, those things that are connected with coronavirus. So uh, right now, if uh, you are looking for such solution, if you need to have some flexible logic, which will automate the operation of some of your customer, or if you came to your customer and you see that they have certain need and they, they have certain pain, uh, you may go with, for example, Galeus K7X one, one of our latest uh, device. So as it mentioned, it is a tracker for advanced fleet management, but as mentioned before in my speech, not only for the fleet management. So with easy logic programming, so we, we have the opportunity to create those scripts that will uh, solve those narrow niche tasks of each and every customer. Adding to easy logic programming, it has uh, two CAN buses, and uh, probably some of you heard about our CAN scanner tool, which helps to get any data from CAN bus, any parameter from any CAN bus. Uh, we support Bluetooth, all the commonly used um, interfaces are there as well, like RS485, 232, and one wire. A uh, variety of inputs and outputs, and uh, the device is optional in 3G. So, um, yeah, just, just to sum it up, uh, it's not only about agriculture, I, I would say. It's about automating the processes. It's about to diving deep into... Uh, business processes of the customer on finding how can we help, how the providers can help them to perform better and to stay safer. So uh, um, this is about it. Uh, it's not about even the industry. It's about uh, our attitude and what we can do for the market in this sense. For it. So yeah, if you have any question, yeah, I guess you can ask them in YouTube uh, and I am there to answer them. Irina? Thanks a lot for the great insights, Maxim. Dear all, if you have any questions, please type them in the YouTube chat. Meanwhile, let's ask our Gurdam expert, Andre, to advise what VLON features would be useful for such implementation case. Uh, thank you, Irina. And the power is mine. Uh, now, let me start from the very beginning. As you all know, in a unit in VLON is a vehicle, person, animal, or other object which is monitored. In the project of Galileo Sky, units correspond to greenhouses where Galileo Sky terminals are installed. Let's go to VLAN and create one unit. I click button new, introduce the name of the unit, greenhouse one, 
choose the device type Galileo Sky 5.0 I click here to see the server address we need to point our device to this uh, to this address and also I specify the ID of the device this is the IMEI number press OK to save but also as it's a greenhouse so we may change the icon all right uh, let's go to the monitoring panel now we have a new unit greenhouse one and you will ask me Andrew how can we know what's the temperature inside inside our greenhouse to answer that, uh, to answer that I will tell you about virtual sensors in VLAN Generally speaking, a virtual sensor corresponds to a real sensor connected to, to the tracking device. Most of the sensors are based on a parameter coming in messages received from the device. We can see all the messages of our unit in the messages tab of the monitoring interface. Let's take a look at my test unit named Greenhouse 2. I execute the messages report for today. As we see, the messages include information about the location, speed, coordinates, and much more. What we need is the parameters column. We need to ident identify the parameter that matches the temperature sensor connected to the device. Parameters can have various names and these names are predefined in the device configuration. For example, the parameter name can be ADC15. Just like this. I copy this name of the parameter, go to the properties of my unit, sensors tab, and we create a, sem uh, a temperature sensor based on this parameter. Let's see the results. Nice, we see the temperature inside our greenhouse, number two. Uh, but for us, it's not enough. Let's build a dashboard that would let us track our sensors. I will use the sensor later application for this. I go to the apps list, choose sensor later, open it. Sensor enables you to monitor the values of counters and sensors from stationary and moving units. Uh, in Sensor we can have multiple dashboards. In our case, we have five dashboards. And they correspond to uh, separate units. I choose the first dashboard, Greenhouse. Then I choose the unit. And the sensor I want to start monitoring. I can attach the sensor to the dashboard. Press OK to save. And now we have this sensor. Uh, you know, what we can do is uh, we can change the look of the sensor, the style. You can upload a custom image. We can also change the background of our dashboard. It can, it can be a custom image, just color or a map view. I prefer a custom image. Additionally, we can set up notifications that would notify us if something's wrong. Just indicate the allowed values in the properties of the sensor. In my case, I set uh, it from 20 to 20 degrees. We choose the trigger condition in range or out of range. Then choose the means of notification sending, SMS or email. For SMS, you should introduce the phone number. For email, uh, you indicate the email address. I press OK to save. Now, if the temperature is too high or too low, the dispatcher will get a notification, just like this. And also, it will be sent to the email or by SMS. The same way you can configure sensors for any other parameter. Uh, I hope it has been useful for you, Irina. Thank you, Andre. I can see that we have a question for Maxim. Maxim, you were talking about Galileo Sky 7 sensors. Can you kindly name these sensors, for example? No, I cannot, unfortunately. The, uh, the reason for that is that um, we never hold, held them in our hands. So our partners just found out, okay, th this is what uh, will suit this project and uh, just connected it. That's it. So, um, there is, I can pr probably find out it for you, So, but I need some time to check what was exactly the model and make of uh, those sensors. 
but uh, the idea behind that you may pick any sensor on the market which obviously uh, transmits data you through uh, those commonly used interfaces like analogous frequency pulse or uh, discrete or uh, rs232 or rs485 or one wire and connect it with the tracker seamlessly and we will never know that so so th there are a variety of sensors on the market and we can connect them all that's it Thank you, Maxim. Okay, then we can move on. Please welcome our next presenter, Marianne from Quecklink. Marianne, the spotlight is now on you. <coughs> For giving us this opportunity to present. Um, so I'll, I'll present on behalf of Quecklink, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you are aware of us. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a brief about the company. Um, so, uh, worldwide we've sold about 10 million devices so far, uh, and still counting. Um, for, uh, for our range of devices and for uh, the, company, the, the countries where we, we actually sell them, uh, we are worldwide. So, um, currently listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange since 2017. 75% uh, of our company is R&D, um, so we're very capable on that on that side. Um, and uh, we have a large range of devices. So um, I'll, I'll show you what we've come up with for this presentation, but I'll also introduce you basically into some of the other, uh, the other product range. So we've got about 75 different devices on the market at the moment. Um, we are currently the largest manufacturer of LTE devices as well. Um, but for this, uh, for this case, we've chosen our GB300 device. So it's actually a proven device in the market. Uh, some of you may be familiar with it, uh, others may not. Um, it's, uh, the GB300 is a 2G, although we do have variants in uh, 3G and also LTE. I've listed down some of the, the main features and some of the main sensors. Uh, here, so you can actually see uh, see what the device can can be connected to. Um, during uh, the current situation with the COVID nineteen, um, we we can see that a lot of our customers are using more and more sensors, and there's various use cases. So uh, in this presentation, uh, I'll just go through some of the use cases and some of the ways in which our customers have chosen to use this device. Um, on, on this on this slide and on this presentation, you can see um, the multiple IOs. Uh, that's just your uh, your normal inputs and outputs. Uh, the RS two thirty two port, which allows for connection with uh, multiple sensors, and I, I do appreciate that. There's probably going to be a question about that that later. Uh, we have the two way audio interface uh, for real time voice communication. Uh, we have crash detection, driver behavior monitoring with our built in accelerometers. Uh, and then we have fuel level monitoring systems, uh, which uh, need to be connected to either our fuel sensor, which is listed on the right hand side, the UFS 300, or also compatible with uh, the escort fuel sensors, which will be introduced later on. Uh, I'd also like to, uh, to make specific note of the support for the temperature sensor, because in this COVID-19 situation, we can see that this is the most used um, sensor uh, with this device anyways. Um, so I'll, I'll go to the next slide and uh, I'll tell you basically some of the, uh, some of the application stories that we've heard from our customers. Uh, the cold chain food, food transportation, we are all very familiar with this. Um, the device is installed obviously in the cab. Uh, a sensor runs uh, to the back and we like to monitor that uh, food, produce and so on is arriving at the location at the right temperature and uh, basically the quality that we we learn to, to expect. Um, the, uh, the fleet management side of things, which is basically increasing the visibility of the vehicle status, uh, we understand that uh, during this, this situation, the internet sales and so on have grown sufficiently. Uh, and for the deliveries, uh, it's very, very important to know where the trucks are, where the delivery vans are, and so on. 
uh, and the transportation monitoring, uh, which uh, we're all familiar with as well, and the transportation monitoring. So this could be uh, various different things. So, I mean, uh, during this, this COVID-19 situation, I've seen uh, quite a few, few uh, interesting use cases where, uh, for example, the, the car sales on the internet have grown considerably. The, uh, I know myself uh, working from home or in the office for the last couple of weeks, um, we have been using uh, some of the transportation services for food delivery and, and so on. Um, so uh, that's that's basically my presentation. Uh, it's it's focused around this GB three hundred device. Uh, like I like I said before, we've got uh, quite a quite a large portfolio of devices, um, but with uh, with the two million devices that I that I mentioned before of this particular device, uh, we found that this is uh, by far the most used. So uh, please let me know if you do have any questions. I'm sorry that we couldn't meet in person, but uh, good times will come back again. Thank you, Irena. Thank you very much, Marianne. To all who are watching us, kind reminder, please ask your questions in the chat. Meanwhile, Andre, can yes. you please share how to apply Vialon to this case? Yes, sure. Okay. Uh, another interesting case for, uh, for you today from Marianne, and let me demonstrate how Vialon can be used here. First of all, let me show the eco-driving module to you. Eco-driving allows you to monitor and rate any driver's behavior that you consider to be important. For example, hard braking, acceleration, cornering, and so on. I have a unit with the configured eco-driving criteria, minibus. I go to the properties of this unit, eco-driving tab. As you see, we have a list of violations and penalty points that will be given to the driver of the minibus if a violation is detected. Our system allows to convert the received penalties into a six-point evaluation system where rank 1 is assigned to the worst driver with more than 500 penalty points and rank 6 is assigned to the driver with zero penalty points. Once the criteria are configured, we can go ahead and take a look at the report that will help us to analyze the behavior of the minibus driver. In general, reports allow you to analyze the performance of your fleet including fuel consumption, fuel thefts, fillings, trips, stops, parkings, engine hours and idling, visits of geofences, and much more. For just for now, let's analyze the behavior of our drivers. I go to the Reports tab, choose the pre-created report for driver's behavior analysis. Here it is. Uh, executed, for example, for the previous hour. I choose the eco driving table. As we see, we see, the rank of our driver Olga is 4.5, uh, and the system has detected 45 violations. So this driver has got 74 penalty points. I can click here to see all the violations and their count. It's uh, okay, maybe it's a good driver. Uh, and now we have a proof. If it's a bad driver, we will also have a proof. And when drivers know that they will be penalized for harsh driving, they will try to drive carefully and it guarantees cargo safety during transportation. Uh, by the way, regarding drivers, uh, in VLON we have a special module dedicated to drivers. You can assign drivers to your unit either manually or automatically. For auto assignment, you can implement iButtons, RFIDs, or for example, Bluetooth tax system. Okay, another characteristic that might be important during cargo transportation, temperature control. If your customer delivers ice cream from one city to another, just like I showed in the previous project, you can create temperature sensors and control the temperature in the, in the monitoring interface or via sensor later. Here, here is an example of a delivery scooter where we track temperature inside the coolant bag. That's the temperature, the current temperature. We can also see it here. And one more feature that I think will be useful in the project of Marianne, notifications. As you have seen uh, in the previous project in VLON, you can be notified about any unit activity or change in its state. We can create a notification that will notify us if there is a crash detected by the device. Such events 
can be registered in the history of our unit and can be analyzed via reports afterwards. Uh, so we go to the properties of the minibus, to the sensors tab. Here I created a digital crash detection sensor. If it has, uh, so basically it can have two values, one or zero. If, it, if it's one, it means that the crash took place. Uh, based on the sensor, we will create a notification. I go to the notifications tab. I, let's say, uh, I already have a notification. Here it is, crash detection alarm. The type of this notification is sensor value. I introduce the sensor name here, crash detection sensor. We also specify the values from one to one in range. So when uh, the sensor is activated, we will be notified. And here we also choose the measures that will be taken when this notification triggers. I chose display online notifi notification in a pop-up window and register event for this unit. This is the text that will be displayed for the dispatcher. As a result, if a crash happens, the dispatcher will be notified. I, also, I already have some cases. And uh, that's it for now. Thank you all for your attention, Irina. Thank you, Andrei. Dear Thank partners, you. if you have any questions to Marianne, please feel free to write them in our YouTube chat. So far, I do not see any question, means Marianne's explanation was super clear. So <laughs> I'm glad to hear. <laughs> okay, Thank you. let's continue then. Tim, you are welcome on our virtual stage. Hi guys, my name is Tim with Escort Monitoring Systems out of Russia. Um, our uh, speciality is manufacturing of fuel level sensors uh, that we do since 2009. Um, the essence of fuel, precision fuel monitoring is to save fuel, to count it, to optimize it, and essentially to save on the fuel. Um, nowadays, it's not easy uh, to, to pay high costs of diesel uh, for the fleet owners. So the best thing we can offer is uh, to make to make it count, uh, to have 99% uh, accuracy for the fuel control. So here is the best sellers. Here are the best sellers that we have. Um, allow me to present you. On the left side here is a wireless fuel level sensor, Escort TD BLE. And on the right side here, we have wireless angle sensor, Escort TU BLE. Uh, BLE stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. So as you can guess, these are battery powered devices uh, that have no wires whatsoever. So this is the future that we are moving towards to, uh, to allow um, installations to go quicker, uh, to eliminate uh, vandalism um, connected with wires and basically to make life easier. Um, BLE, Escort BLE protocol was implemented by quite a few uh, tracker manufacturers. And uh, as my colleague from QuickLink mentioned before, uh, QuickLink devices uh, and Escort TD BLE and Escort DU BLE sensors are fully compatible by direct Bluetooth connection. So you won't have to uh, run any wires through the frame of the vehicles in order to have the system installed. This particular case I would like to tell you about has been implemented for the fuel transporters in South Africa. Um, the fuel is expensive and uh, transporting big amounts of fuel requires constant monitoring. And with our fuel level sensors, it allows you to get 99% accuracy when doing so. Uh, the way it works, um, you have to install fuel level sensor in the tank, in the vehicle's tank and in the transportation uh, compartment which is the biggest one on the fuel transporter. Uh, wireless tilt angle sensor is applicable for all tilting parts. Um, in this particular case, that would be the master door, uh, which you have to open in order to access all kind of uh, handles and all kind of discharge units for the fuel. Um, here are some installation overviews. 
Uh, you can see the photo on the left. There is a person uh, performing a so-called tank calibration. Tank calibration is uh, necessary in order to achieve a high accuracy. So um, this has to be done by professionals or um, or you can become a professional. You, you can learn uh, how to do so, how, how to do that. Um, on two pictures on the right, you can see installed angle sensor. So these angle sensors and fuel level sensors, they are very, very, um, they are made from very strong material. This is a glass field polyamide, which uh, cannot be killed, cannot be uh, broken. Um, it, uh, you can you can install an uh, anti-tampering seal uh, so you can see who was uh, opening if uh, there was some a driver assigned to the task to this particular time and the fuel level sensor or angle sensor was damaged so you would at least know who was responsible for that um, at this particular point. So we've done the installation of the uh, trackers. Of, we've done the installation of the fuel level sensor and we've done the installation of the angle sensor. So what do we get? Why do we need that? Um, as a result, uh, we get this. Those are the graphs. Um, on the top left, you can see the fuel consumption graph. Uh, basically, the vertical um, bar, the first one, is a fill-up. So the fuel goes up while the vehicle is standing. Then you can see the consumption. The vehicle starts moving and then it consumes the, um, it consumes the fuel. Uh, in, if um, This particular graph is a graph of the honest driver. So if you would see the sudden drop of the fuel, for instance, uh, when the vehicle is standing, that means a possibility of the fuel theft. Or perhaps your vehicle is over-consuming um, uh, fuel. So that means you will have to uh, pay closer attention to the maintenance. Perhaps there are some necessary filter change needs to be done or things like that. The graph on the bottom corresponds to opening and closing the lid. Um, it counts degrees. So you can see the zero degrees. You can see a degree. You can see the 160 degree. Uh, that basically allows you to see when and where the lid to access the um, uh, you know discharge units was open, so you can see who was assigned to the vehicles at this point, who've done the operation, was it done in authorized area or was it not done in authorized area? As a total result, you get um, the fuel consumption on the right. So basically, uh, the things that you see, uh, the fuel consumption drops almost by a third. Um, in this particular company, you uh, they've done. They've done some calculations and their fuel consumption a liters per engine hour before the installation of the system was almost 92 liters per engine hour. After the implementation of the system and after the system uh, worked there for a certain period of time and uh, certain drivers were sanctioned um, and certain vehicles were fixed as well, the fuel consumption fell down to 62 liters per engine hour. This is almost by third. So the, uh, the core idea is this. In order to optimize, to count, and to save money, there is a quite a big necessity for the precision fuel control, precision fuel monitoring. And to make it easier, we took the wires away. End of story. My name is Tim, guys. Have you got any questions? Please feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, if some questions may not be answered right away, I can answer them later. Um, in the comments and thank you very much Gurtum for giving such an opportunity to us Thanks a lot for sharing a nice case team. Dear partners, do you have any questions to team? If so please type them in our YouTube chat. Meanwhile, let's see what are Andre's comments on this case Okay, we have another very interesting and inspiring project this time from team uh, Let me share my screen, please So Again, we create various sensors in order to monitor fuel and the position of the fuel tank cap. I go to the sensors of my aut unit automobile. I, it has a sensor that indicates the state of the fuel tank cap, whether it's open or closed. And also it has a virtual fuel level sensor. Keep in mind that once you configure a fuel level sensor, you should activate it in the fuel consumption tab of the unit properties. That's how we activate it. I, by checking the box fuel level sensors 
Additionally, we can uh, filter, filter the fuel level sensor values. It might be useful if the road is not smooth, and, but you'd like to get a beautiful fuel chart. Okay, once uh, we finish the configuration, we can go ahead and check the fuel report. I have a pre-configured one. Let's execute it. First of all, we can see the information about the trips of our unit. That's the information that I decided to include in my trips table. Beginning end of the trip, mileage, amount of fuel consumed, some information about consumption, and the driver. If you have a driver uh, assigned to the vehicle, you will see the, dri the driver's name here as well. Uh, okay, what's more, our re report shows fuel fillings, fuel thefts, and we also see the fuel chart where we can analyze how the fuel level was changing during the chosen time interval. As we see here, this is the fuel level, it was slowly moving down. Then we have a marker of fuel theft, and this is the marker of fuel filling. If you remember, we have a special sensor that displays the state of the fuel tank cap. I can activate or deactivate it. And we can see where, uh, when uh, the tank was opened in the chart as well. By the way, it was opened and uh, fuel theft took place. Alright, uh, this information can be exported to a file. Uh, in one of the supported formats, HTML, PDF, Excel, XML, and CSV, or we can quickly export it to PDF or Excel. Let's try PDF. It is loading. Just one moment. Okay, this is our report. All right. Uh, you know, I would like to show another feature to you that will be useful for this project, jobs. The jobs feature allows sending these reports to the client by email automatically. And let's take a look at the job that I created, unit report by email. Here it is. By the way, there are a few other job types. I choose the report template, file format, indicate the recipients. Choose the unit and also set the execution schedule. For example, in my case, this report will be sent to the client at 6 p.m. each Friday. Okay. Uh, as you might know, in VLON you can create various zones on the map, geofences, and control the unit activity inside or outside these zones. This feature together with notifications can be useful in Teams project as well. Let's say we only allow drivers uh, to open the fuel tank cap at the filling stations and we want to be notified about non-authorized openings. For this, first we create uh, geofences for the filling stations. I have a couple of them here. Petrol station 1 and petrol station 2. And then we add a notification with a smart algorithm that will notify us if the fuel tank is opened outside the filling stations. My notification is named Unauthorized Fuel Tank Opening. Here it is. Let's take a look at the settings. The notification type is Geofence. I choose the unit position outside Geofence and add uh, petrol stations to my list of Geofences that I control. Then I, yeah, I also check the box Sensor Value then indicate the name of the uh, fuel tank cap sensor and sp specify the values from 1 to 1, where 1 means that the tank is opened. Choose the trigger type in range, because we want to be notified when it's opened. I go next and choose the notification, the uh, measure that will be taken when this notification triggers. I chose display online notification in a pop-up window and register event for unit. Introduce the text of the notification. And basically that's it. I also have an example of this notification triggered. 
unauthorized fuel tank opening. Okay, basically that's it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope these five minutes have been really useful for you. Uh, Irina? Awesome, thank you, Andre. We have a question to Tim, please let me read it. Tim, are these fuel level sensors intrinsic safe? And the second question is, any certifications from world safety recognized bodies? Okay, we do have uh, a few sensors certified for safe for the uh, petrol, meaning they are intrinsic safe, yes. Uh, uh, this particular wireless fuel level sensor model has the certification and the sensor model TD150 and TD500 also have uh, the same certifications. Uh, those certifications has been um, made by Russian authorities they do comply with the most major uh, world-renowned uh, you know, certifications like ATEX, for example, and a few more. Um, however, they are legally they are for Russia, for uh, for the CIS countries. Uh, they are being accepted in certain countries, uh, but has, that has to be checked case by case. Um, as far as I know, in India, they do accept our certifications. In most African countries, they also do. Um, for uh, some models of the sensors, we do have test reports and we have uh, CE certifications that uh, work fine for European uh, consumers. Hope that answers the question, yes. Thank you, Tim. Gentlemen, Maxim, Marianne, Tim, Andre, Thank you for sharing your experiences with us today. Today's cases are good examples of some projects and some of the hardware which is in demand during the crisis today. Dear partners, this crisis is the time to search for new opportunities. So if you are planning to enter new markets or niches, please take these examples into consideration. In case you need any help from Gurtam's side to choose the suitable hardware for your projects, we are always glad to help. Please check out the information about Vialon compatible hardware on our website. The link will be below this video in the description. And of course, feel free to contact our implementation specialists. If you do not know who is your implementation specialist, please email us at sales at gurtam.com and we will introduce you. Dear guests, thank you so much for joining us today. Please feel free to continue the discussion we started today in the partner chat and on the forums. Please check out our next webinar on June 4 called Vialon Life Hacks 10 Platform Features You Didn't Know About. And follow our meetup calendar on gurtam.com. As you already know, the link will be below this video in the description. Thank you so much. Gurtam Meetups is an ongoing project. Every Thursday, 5 p.m. Minsk time, we are here with you with a new hot topic. Thank you so much. Stay tuned and stay safe. And see you in the next webinar. See you.